How y'all doing? I'm McKenzie here again, guys. Yep, he's back. How long? I don't know. As long as I can stay back. Well, today I'm back with a, a little tabletop knife review. I don't have any test footage of this knife, unfortunately. All the test footage that I had on this knife are from months and months ago. Um, all the way in the back last year, and they were on my old computer. And my old computer, well, it got, I don't know what, it got a bug or something, but it took a crap on me. So I pretty much lost everything. Yay. Uh, I guess that's why you're supposed to back things up on uh, external hard drives. Doo -doo -doo. I got one of those now. Oh well. So maybe we'll back up everything I make from here on out on external hard drives. Uh, oh well. Anyway. Although I do not have any actual testing footage of this knife I think just by looking at the blade there you can tell that uh, this knife has been well used um, and well tested this is the I don't know if you can make that out this is the Ontario knife companies gen 2 SP 43 this is a overall length knife of 13 inches it's got a cutting blade or or a blade I'm not sure if the whole cutting blade uh, where's my tape measure well I had one here um, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, eight inch blade now I'm not sure if that's the total blade here's my thing so if that's the cutting surface let's find out so that eight inches is just giving the blade itself a number the actual cutting surface of this blade is about seven seven and a quarter slightly more than seven and a quarter but uh, you know it's kind of basically a medium sized survival knife in in my opinion wouldn't call it a large survival knife until I start hitting nine inch cutting blades. Yeah, nine to ten inch. Things like the Hunglis by SA, uh, the Kershaw Camp knife, the Kershaw 10, I forget what it's called. I don't have one yet. I'm looking into getting one. Um, the Buck Hoodlum, the 10 inch blade, the Ontario R D nine Bush. Those I would call large blades. This one I would call a medium sized blade. Any blade between I'd say six and a half to eight inches is medium, in my opinion. And this is a good medium sized knife. It's made out of 5160 spring steel. Made right here in the good old US of A. It's got Craton handles. Um, it's a relatively cheap handle as far as a uh, hmm let me rephrase that it's an inexpensive handle material but i don't consider it to be cheap i mean these things hold up very well um i do like them quite a lot i like the grip the craton gives you um the slip resistance and all that um it also takes up some of the shock if you're batoning uh if you're trying to chop smaller twigs and whatnot uh, saplings and things like that um, it definitely does take up some of that shock the uh, rubberized grip it does have a little finger toil system there which is also made of craton which you can see has been beaten and deformed um, but it's still there I'm not sure if I would trust that in a knife fight not to just get cut off and slice my hand but I also would try not to get into a knife fight in the first place anyway I've been testing this for a good at least two years and the main way I've tested it is through batoning just to see the durability of this steel um, how strong it is how prone to breaking it is and so far I've been impressed um, I've had this knife for two winter seasons sitting next to my fireplace and I use it when I need kindling to start my wood stove. Now, when I first started this testing process, I didn't really mean to do it how I ended up doing it. Um, I was batoning normally. 
using my knife inside a piece of wood and banging it with another piece of wood in order to you know make little sticks of kindling but then it came to the point where I ran out of little sticks and the only little stick I had left or not little either I mean we're talking probably two inch around to four inch around sticks that I'm splitting and uh, <clears throat> well I ran out of them so it got to the point where I needed to chop up my little baton I was using for kindling and uh, what am I going to use in order to baton through you know what am I going to use as a baton well you're probably wondering why this has been sitting here <laughs> this is what I've been using for the past two years as a baton on this knife if you look closely at the top of the blade you'll see it's uh, quite dented and dinged to crap up and that's because I've been going metal on metal using that as a baton to split my kindling and I've been doing that three times a week for the past well not for the past two years but for three months in a row two to three times well no let's put it six months in a row because I've been through two winters with this knife um, beating the crap out of it with a fire poker you may be thinking uh that's abuse yeah yeah no kidding of course it is uh, I would never suggest anyone do this to a knife ever but it was just the kind of thing that spur of the moment I was trying to be gentle with it when I first split up the baton because I really wasn't wanting to push the knife that far at that point um, so I was kind of gentle with it at first but the more I kept splitting the wood using the poker as baton the harder and harder I kept banging on this knife and it has held up I am very impressed by this knife it hasn't cracked it hasn't shattered into little pieces I mean the thing is still here and the only problem is a couple a little dents in the top now that's probably due to the fact that the Rockwell hardness of this knife is between I believe 55 and 57 so not a super hard steel hence it's not that brittle you can bang on it and bang on it and not really have to worry that much about the thing failing on you but at 55 Rockwell it's still not so soft that you're gonna lose your edge right away and the, the edge has been pretty good on this knife now it also comes to the fact that this is a spring steel you know and spring steel is meant to give a bit but uh, as far as the hammering and banging on it but I don't think it was ever designed to be baton with a, with a poker uh, but it's held up very well it is marketed as a outdoor survival knife by Ontario um, I think their manufacturer suggested retail price I saw was like $126 but I've never seen these knives go for that much ever retail the highest I've seen I believe it was like $79 the best price I found today I just checked was on amazon.com <clears throat> I think it was like $58 it was prime eligible so if you have Amazon Prime you can get free shipping you know in two days for 58 bucks I think I saw it on uh, knife was it knife HQ or blade HQ whichever I saw it on there for 79 no 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 60 69 dollars I think it was on knife center perhaps for 79 so between 58 and 79 are the prices that I found with a real quick search it's available a lot of different places I think I even saw it on Midway USA which is mainly a, uh, a gun site <clears throat> but they had it on there too and I think it was 69 at that site as well don't quote me on the price for a knife HQ and knife center I'm not 100% sure those are accurate I do know Amazon was $58 and 99 cents awesome uh, I say for that price pick this up immediately if it's something that you feel that you need you know if you're looking for a good robust outdoor survival knife which isn't that heavy I do not have a scale here to tell you the exact weight but it's not that heavy at all um, it comes with a sheath granted it is an Ontario knife company sheath so they're not the best sheaths in the world but they're not bad I mean 
for the price you're paying for the knife, the fact that you get a sheath at all is pretty amazing. Um, you know, it's a it's a nylon with a with a plastic insert. There's no retention without that uh, snap, unless you were to pull the uh, plastic insert out and heat it up, mold it to the knife, and then glue it back in. That's an option I've done with some other Ontario knives, and it actually holds it and it doesn't shake around that much. Um, but as it is right now, I mean, there's no actual retention with the sheath. It just just falls right out. It, it's a little noisy, so perhaps it would be smart to take that uh, plastic insert out. Get yourself a heat gun, heat it up. Press it together in a vise or between some books or something just to mold it to the shape of the knife. Then all you have to do is get some like shoe goo or something like that. Put it on the insert, stick it back in, you'll be good to go. <coughs> it's not a terrible sheath, it's just not the best thing out there, you know. A lot of, a lot of guys are into Kydex and, eh, you know, Kydex is cool and all, but it adds a lot of money to the price. Um, so this is a really good budget blade, if you ask me, for $58. You get yourself a really good knife. Um, I don't have a, really anything bad to say about it. <coughs> when I... Actually, there is one thing I just remembered. A long time ago, I made a, I made a video. I was cutting a bunch of fruit up with some knives. This is one of the knives I was using to go through a coconut. When I did go through that coconut, it did chip a bit of the blade. It actually it was a fairly significant chip, to be honest. The thing is, I don't know if it broke on the hard shell of the coconut or if it broke on the nail that was holding the coconut. <laughs> on the uh, piece of wood I was chopping it on. Um, uh, my feeling is I didn't see any marks on the nail, so I think it actually did hit the coconut. But ever since then, since I reground it, I haven't had any issues like that at all. So it could be that whenever they originally put the edge on the knife, maybe it got a little too hot and it made it a little too brittle on the edge. Uh, but since then, I haven't had any issues at all with chipping with this knife. And honestly once again that was abuse but it's you know it's a piece of information that i have i'm going to share it with you other than that i've had no issues at all with this knife i've been very happy with it and if you're looking for a knife in that size i'd say it's a it's a good buy all right well that's all i got for now i'm gonna go out in the snow and play with tactical bell i think we're gonna build ourselves a snowman so uh i'll talk to you guys later take care iron Z. peace